Welcome to Core IM's Five Pearls segment. In our recent podcast episodes, we focused on the nuts and bolts of radiation oncology for the internist. In this video, join us for a deeper dive into the physiology of radiation in light speed fashion. We'll be drawing the connection between what's happening in radiation therapy and the particles that make up the radiation itself. So we'll learn why understanding whether your patient got photon or proton or electron radiation can actually make a massive difference in the care of your patients. This does require us to revisit the basic differences between these particles, but with just a little bit of understanding, we can grasp why we might choose one kind of radiation over another for a particular tumor. It's pretty cool, I promise. The most common type of radiation therapy is photon radiation. So what is a photon, really? It's a massless, chargeless particle of energy, the same stuff visible light is made of. Photons can be used for radiation therapy. We also use photons to make our X-ray images and CT scans. So what's the difference between the radiation we use for our X-rays and the radiation we use to treat cancer? Again, it's all the same stuff, it's all photons. The only difference is that we use lower energy photons for our X-ray images. The small black dot here is a low energy photon. And here we have our patient. As these low energy photons bounce off or pass through the body, they create our X-rays and CT scans. But in radiation therapy, the photons are significantly higher energy. Here's our patient again, who's going to be getting photon radiation therapy. Now we have our high energy photon here, this yellow starburst. The photons we use in radiation therapy are really high energy, like a hundred times more energy than X-ray photons or thereabouts. Here we have a patient with a vertebral tumor. Once again, we're treating this tumor with photon radiation. So the photons go in and they interact with water to create free radicals. Those free radicals are free to run around and damage cells nearby. This is great for damaging tumor, but the free radicals can also damage nearby healthy tissues, which can be a problem. The other problem is that photons travel in a straight line, straight through the body. This line is the path of the photon radiation. The thing is, because photons travel straight through the body, they cause collateral damage to all the tissues along their path, on the way in and out. That doesn't seem good. And there are absolutely some parts of the body where we really want to avoid that kind of collateral damage. What about the brain? You really don't want collateral there. How about the skin? You just want to hit the surface, not anything underneath. Now how do we do that? What if I told you that a lot of this collateral damage is potentially avoidable if we understand just a tiny bit about the particles that make up the different types of radiation? The photons, the protons, and the electrons. That would be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? So let's get into it. We'll go back to the photon now. The problem we're seeing with photons is that they travel straight through the body and they damage everything in their path. When we think about photons, let's remember that they are massless and chargeless. Because they have no mass, they pass easily through cells and solid matter. And because they're not charged, they don't interact with other charged particles. So that's the reason why photons pass straight through everything. They don't have much to stop them. Let's add just a little bit of terminology here for the types of collateral we see. This damage near the entrance point is called the entrance dose. And this damage near the exit is, you guessed it, called the exit dose. In some situations, like in some brain tumors, this kind of collateral damage is unacceptable. So when we're in those situations, photons don't seem like the right choice. Question is, what's the alternative, and how is it different? The answer lies in the other two particles we talked about, protons and electrons. Let's make a chart to help us compare photon, proton, and electron radiation. Then we'll compare their mass and their charge, and we'll examine how those two properties affect the path of each particle through the body. As we just talked about, photons have no mass and no charge. Since they're really light, and they don't interact with charged particles, 
these photons pass straight through the body without resistance. We'll call this kind of path through and through. Let's talk about protons next. Unlike photons, protons have mass and they have charge. So what is their path going to look like? What's different about protons is that they start to slow down when they enter tissue. Because they're heavy, yeah, they can steamroll through the body, but they're charged. So these big charged protons hit resistance from cells or other charged particles, and they slow down. Eventually, the protons stop at the tumor. This line here shows the path of the proton. See how it's not through and through? The other difference with protons is that they deposit most of their energy just before they stop. So they're putting the majority of their energy right at the tumor and not at all the organs they pass through. So their collateral damage pattern looks more like this. This means with proton beams, we have a very minimal entrance dose and a non-existent exit dose. That's pretty different from what we talked about with photon radiation. Sounds great, doesn't it? So what's the catch? Let's remember that protons are heavy. Unlike photons, they have mass. All that mass makes protons tough to accelerate. In order to get these particles moving fast enough so that we can use them for radiation therapy, we need an extra special linear accelerator called a cyclotron. These cyclotrons are not common. There are only a few dozen of these in the United States, and their time is split between medical uses and particle research purposes. That means for now, the use of protons is reserved for special circumstances, like brain tumors in children, for example, or certain anatomies where you really do not want to harm the tissues nearby. Bottom line, if your patient's gotten proton radiation, know that they received a highly specialized treatment designed to minimize damage to nearby tissues, probably for a very important reason. Let's recap a bit with key points for protons. Protons have mass, and they have charge. And because of this, they start fast, but they quickly slow down when they hit tissue. And they stop right at the target. One more particle to go, the electron. Electrons are particles with a tiny little bit of mass, but they also have charge. So what does that mean for their path? Because electrons don't have a lot of mass, they can't steamroll through tissues the way protons can. On top of that, because they're charged, they get easily repelled by charged things. So they don't get very far. Let's see what that looks like. Take this example of a skin cancer. Our electrons are highly charged and easily repelled by cells or other charged molecules, and they don't have enough mass to steamroll through. So that means the electrons stay skin deep. They hit superficial structures and nothing else. They don't get any further than a couple centimeters. This is great for skin cancers or skin level metastases. You're only hitting the tumor and nothing underneath. Let's summarize the key takeaways on electron radiation. Because these electrons are so light and so charged, their path stops at the surface. And with that, our chart is done. Woohoo! What are our take homes from all of this? Let's remember that of the three particles used in radiation treatment, Photons are by far the most common. But because they're massless and chargeless particles, they go through and through, and can do a fair amount of collateral damage to tissues on the way in and out. Protons are heavy and charged. They steamroll through tissues, but they slow down eventually, and they put most of their energy right at the tumor. That means they do very little damage on the way in and no damage on the way out. This is great for deep tumors where precision is necessary like certain kinds of brain tumors. Electrons are really light, so they can't steamroll through tissues like protons can. They're also charged, so they get slowed down by other charged particles in the body. That means they stay close to the surface and are ideal for skin cancers and skin metastases. They don't hit anything deep underneath. And there we have it, some basic mechanisms of radiation therapy. Sure, there's a lot of nuance and complicated physics out there, all of which is beyond the scope of this video. But are you interested in learning some clinical pearls about radiation therapy? If so, check out the Core IM podcast and its Five Pearls segment, 
where we have a two-part series on radiation oncology for the internist. That's all, folks. Take care.